Welcome back to another episode of The Line, where we feature our favorite paintings and the artists who create them. My name is Michael Klein, and I'm here with Joshua Larocq and Lewis Carr. Uh, we're super excited about this issue. This week, we're presenting uh, a painting by a dear friend, Jeffrey T. Larson. Uh, he's from Minnesota. He studied with uh, Richard Lack, and he's uh, extremely well known for his uh, still life paintings. So Jeff was an uh, avid student of um, the philosophy of mixing academic art with Impressionism. So he's, he's very into uh, exploring how to use color and how to incorporate that in a new way into his paintings. So uh, we have here, this piece is called Suspended Flight, and it's of uh, a wild turkey that Jeff uh, found one day on a, on a hike. So he brought it back to the studio. And I think it's a fascinating uh, still life. It's our biggest still life thus far, and we're super excited to talk about it. So, yeah. so when did you first meet Jeff? Oh, geez, I was young. When, when I was studying in Minnesota, it was when I was a teenager, so 18. I saw some of his exhibitions in uh, uh, Edina. He had a lot. Uh, so he wasn't part of that school. He was just in the area. In the same sort yeah. of general region. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so he would show a lot. Uh, he's always painted his family. Uh, he's very influenced by Soroya. That's, mm. I remember my teachers talking about okay. when Jeff had like this aha moment where he started incorporating a lot more chroma and mm. he took his family on vacations and you know, did a lot more figure painting. So uh, he's kind of had a, a system of painting still lifes in the winter and his family in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of been that back and forth, so. The piece really has a great color harmony to it. I, I just love how he uses the complements of the purple and the yellow. And it's such an interesting subject matter. It's kind of like you have this traditional representational um, idea, but done in such a contemporary w way. Mm -hmm. uh, you just don't see it that often. So the, uh, the thing that first drew me into this painting, and it's actually a, it's a common theme through a lot of his still lives, is the multiple cast shadows <coughs> on that wall there. Right. Um, so you can see that some of them tip more towards sort of the bluish hues, some tip more toward the orange. And right. I've never been to a studio, and I can't remember if you have or not, but what it would seem to me is there's a, there's a wide aperture yeah. to mm -hmm. his light source. It's, yeah. a, it's a natural light, of course, and so there's a wide window, and so at some point you're getting the blue of the sky, the vault of the sky shining in and able to hit a certain portion of the, of the wall, we call it the penumbra, right? Mm -hmm. And then there must be some sort of part where the sun on a sunny day is hitting like a, like a lower, uh, you know, the ground or some building uh, mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. that then's now shining this warm light into mm -hmm. that sort of like lower part. And it's just fascinating. Yeah, I don't think yeah. you get a lot of people that really just go for it. They just jump in and, and, and I'm sure that that, that, that fluctuates uh, through the day or over the, mm. the number of days that it would have taken to paint something like that. So you, yeah. he's, yeah. he's looking for something while he's doing it and it just makes this really interesting you yeah. know, effect. Yeah. yeah, definitely. It plays up the idea of, of how color is part of the composition. Right. So he's, he's seeing that subtlety in nature running with it and he does have a big, he has a, it's probably, yeah. I would say at least 20 feet wide bank of windows that... 20 feet yeah, wide, yeah, so yeah. it's huge, right. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. And then the room is a lighter color, so it bounced that warm uh, back. Yeah. So would that, I mean, would that aspect of it kind of be an example of his influence from the Impressionists? Is that... No, I, I, I think, yeah, most definitely. Is that kind of, yeah. Because yeah. it wasn't a... I guess the the way they would push color in the tradition of the Boston School and Lax kind of breaking mm -hmm. from that. But Jeff's always done a, a excellent job of retaining the realism of it. Sometimes mm -hmm. people can just push it too far. Yeah. And he's always been very respectful of like the, the poetry, the thing that makes it seem valuable. You know, if you push it, if you push it just too far right. and the color harmony then screws up. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look, you know, real. And so you mean if you push like the intensity of the color or something? Yeah, if you like screw up the harmony. So mm -hmm. he's he's managed. He's, it's really chromatic, but he's managing to, to still make it. Yeah. Because it all fits into context. Yeah. Well, part of that respect is is that there's 
a lot of the painting that is neutral, that is helping mm. reinforce mm. the chromatic nature of some of the areas that are sort of accented, you know. Just like in, in like, if you have like an interior room, you know, you, you use an accent color, but you, mm. all, you only use it in certain places and the rest of the room stays relatively neutral or one other sort of solid that's the complement sure. of it. So I think that's where the respect is, is if you look at a lot of his still lives, there's part of it that feels so realistic and, and naturalistic in the sense that it has these sort of deep neutrals, but then mm. there's these moments of uh, where he plays up the high chroma mm. just the right way and just the right spots that allow for it to really kind of sing. Yeah, it's fascinating because the, the, one would think that the subject matter wouldn't allow that or it's just kind of a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a dark subject matter. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, it just one wouldn't think of an impressionist painting it, mm -hmm. or you know seeing that on the road and that's mm -hmm. that's what I like about it is that he he was um, he does a lot of outdoor activities so it it definitely fits into his life it just he pulls things from uh, anywhere that's part of his family life so he's done a, a series of a lot of jars and bowls mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and yarn and things like that but this was a little bit out, outside of the norm for him yeah. and it was um, cool to see that the artist's perspective because if I were to paint this it, it, it would just be much darker mm. you know and so he's got that mm. high chroma but it, it's, uh, it's fascinating. Another thing that's really interesting that I was thinking about uh, earlier is is that he's taking something that's very symmetrical mm. and he's trying to find a beauty in its asymmetry you know, and trying mm. to create an interesting composition with it. So you've got these wings that are doing the exact same thing and going the exact same way, but then puts a spin on it. And even the name of it really kind of gives this action that in nature, you know, even though there's the symmetry, there's also such an, an asymmetry in nature and a randomness in nature that allows for, and he's really kind of capturing sort of mm. the, the tension between those two. Mm. I love just the contemplation of nature. Mm. You know, not very often do you, it's just staring at a shadow on a wall, you know what I mean, and being taken by how the transmitted light mm. is passing through that, that thin bone. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's only painting from life that could make mm. that fascinating, because mm. yeah. otherwise you take a photo and you're just like, you yeah. know, it doesn't, but you spend time with it. I bet it took him at least two to three weeks Maybe, yeah, you know, sure. I mean, I, would, that's, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Because yeah. yeah. as you get up on it, I mean, it, there's it, it, from a distance it reads so well, but you get up on it and there's there's yeah. you know big yeah chunks. But at the same time, he's picked out like almost every little you can see in the top left, like yeah. every overlapping feather and how the different patterns. Yeah. That stuff takes time. Yeah. It's, uh, but it's also it's a very economic way of painting. Isn't yeah. it? I think yeah. you know it's that. When you get up on it, it's not as if he had these really right. tiny brushes. Uh, I mean, he probably yeah. did for some of it, but I don't, it wasn't as if he was, mm. you know, mm. it, that that kind of tightness. Not that there would mm. be anything necessarily bad about that, but mm. I just was impressed by that, mm. the economy right. of his uh, his his technique there um, yeah. to represent something that is so uh, highly detailed, you know. Yeah, especially when you first sit, when I first saw a photo of it, that's exactly what I was like. Right. Wow, this thing's mm -hmm. got like mm -hmm. so much detail. Mm -hmm. And then when you come look at it, I was actually even more impressed of how he used the abbreviation of mm -hmm. his mark mm -hmm. making. But it's just so well understood mm -hmm. and so accurately painted, even though there are large strokes. There's a lot of information in that abbreviation. Mm. Part of that is he does work sight size. So that's, yeah. that's mm. from that tradition. So he's standing back a lot. I remember one of my teachers talking about how uh, at one point, because he had a larger studio, I think, at one point, and he he had like either a skateboard or like rollerblades or something. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he had his palette in his hand, and he was like <laughs> jetting up to it, jetting way back. So he's, he's, he's an energetic guy. I mean, that, he's just that kind of, you know. That's interesting. Oh, so, yeah. so for those of you who don't know, just if I can explain side mm. size for just a yeah, second. So mm. generally, it's you, you, have your, you have your setup, right? Mm. And then you push your, if it's a person or if it's a still life or whatever, and you position your canvas 
right right next next to it, like adjacent to mm -hmm. it. So if we were if we were to imagine Jeff in his studio painting this painting, mm -hmm. the actual uh, skeleton would be like mm -hmm. right here on the wall, mm -hmm. just behind Lewis, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then he would back up to some point, you know, maybe 10, 15 feet away, mm -hmm. and then he would compare the painting to the still life yep. from mm -hmm. that vantage point. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So it's just so the picture plane of the canvas would actually be intersecting right through mm -hmm. right. the setup. Right. The market value of this painting is our most valuable on the show so far, and it's uh, 36000 So that's a very substantial uh, work of art. He's, he's had uh, shows all across the country. He sells mm. extremely well, um, highly sought after. And so this uh, it's just something he's been doing for years and years. And, He's got a big list of collectors, yeah. so we're really fortunate to be able to yeah. Yeah. have this in the studio. The one other thing that I love is there's almost a little bit of a sense of animation with how he uses the penumbra and of the shadows over here, where it almost, if you like look at, like I don't know, like a comic strip or something, you see sort of the movement and there's sort of like stuttering mm. lines. It's like the motion lines, it's yeah. Yeah. In order for it to create suggestion. And I actually wonder if that was part of the idea of when he was laying this out, is that he saw that shadow and was like, huh, that's interesting, because then it makes it feel like you've got this sort of suspended moment, of, but there's movement and animation happening. Mm. I love how different people react to it differently, because my mm. father was in town visiting, and he was like, oh, the coyotes ate that or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like, the, the he's story. thinking, of, yeah, like, what happened? Why? Why was that intact like that or what? Mm. Whereas a lot of my reaction is just look at the blues and the yeah. the viridian yeah. and the you know mm. <laughs> it's so yeah so different how people read a painting. I think that's one of the vocations of the painter, though. You know, as mm. the artist, is to mm. take things that might otherwise be overlooked, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, sort of right. like you were talking about the contemplation of it, mm -hmm. yeah. and you know. Mm. It's it can be the contemplation of flowers, things that people look at all the time and mm. for their you know mm. beauty, and then it can be things that would obviously you know this was on the side of the mm. road you mm. know but he was able to see something in it yeah. and bring it back and and create this out of it. To add what you're, what you're saying is is what a lot of people in that are creatives in all other fields is you you write what you know and mm. you paint what you know mm. and. Um, this is just, I feel like, a great example of what you're talking about in contemplation is, is you spend a lot of time in the things that you love and you know. If you're a hiker, if you go out and, and spend time in nature, you tend to start to see things differently and find beauty in things. And what he's really trying to do, and a lot of people, I think, try to do in their mm -hmm. art careers is like say, hey, this is worth looking at because there's something really beautiful here and setting it up in a place, in a way that people will actually pay attention to it. Because, I mean, this is also, there's a, in, uh, he does it in a way that really reaches to several different interests. You have people that are contemporary people that are like, oh, that's something different that I really yeah. find interesting mm -hmm. that's a still life. But then you also have people that would be like in the, in the hunting field mm -hmm. or in, that are even um, people that are bird watchers or something mm -hmm. that would go, wow, that's really, really beautiful and be interested in it, in it yeah. as well. Yeah, he's definitely playing up the contemporary idea of one object mm -hmm. elevated to, uh, you know, the art of it. Mm -hmm. the, the spiritual aspect of it, the fact that a lot of people could, s I, I touched on it a little bit, but a lot of people could see this as being very dark and pull mm -hmm. out the darkness of it. And I think that the, when you talk about beauty or think about beauty, mm. how suspended flight, I mean, even the romance of kind of just the, you know, there's a lot, I think, that shows his gentle spirit, his kind of, his positive attitude and just his outlook on, he's extracting, you know, the, the beautiful aspects mm. of this thing that could be grotesque or um, overlooked, so. Mm. Something that I love about the painting that's totally off subject to what we're saying now, but I love this little pearly moment mm -hmm. that he has up there on the top bit that you really, if you've ever seen, you know, bones of, of animals or, or there's these tendons and moments where mm -hmm. there is such a pearliness to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And 
um, it's just another accent in a different way mm. that just draws my eye to it and I um, yeah. find mm -hmm. it really great. Well, it's just that it's that contrast of textures mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. throughout yeah. the painting, and that's that's one of them where you get that sort of it's clearly sort of the sinewy thing over the top, and then mm. just above it is this the fluffy, you know, soft feathers mm. like, that are you know uh, just at the base of the of the wing, mm. uh, and against more the background, just sort of the the right above the little pearly moment. Mm. They're just they're those fluffier parts that are that okay. are just the high chroma right. blues. Yeah, yeah, right, mm -hmm. right there. But then there's the then there's the silkier sort of flatter wings as it gets down toward the end, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, then you have the thin the thin little parts of the bone down here that are transmitting light. Mm -hmm. You have the other mm -hmm. harder mm -hmm. parts of the bone. Yeah. Where do you guys? Where would you see this painting hanging? Is it? I I, I imagine it being in some hunter's like cigar room mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, well, uh, that kind of environment yeah yeah. yeah I mean I mean other places is like you know there's sort of there's the the farm home movement mm. you know and neutral is a really thing you know a big yeah, thing yeah, and this yeah, yeah. would go so well in sort of a neutrals environment that's mm. like a farm you know mm. yeah, atmosphere no, just yeah. because yeah. it's it's that it's sort of a connection to nature and and it would be like that one touch in the room that would be like yeah. The chroma. Of what a conversation yeah. piece, yeah. too. Right. You know? Yeah. Fascinating. Well, this is um, it's just such an honor to have these mm -hmm. things in person because so often you see, uh, if we, we exist kind of viewing art through our phones, and to be able to have it up close and personal, uh, people that we respect and admire, this is uh, just a real pleasure to be able to bring this to people. Uh, we hope. Uh, that you've enjoyed this episode. Again, it's Jeffrey T. Larson, and um, we ask that you share it with your friends. If you're, if you know anyone who's interested in uh, collecting art, this is we want to uh, share what Jeff is doing. So it's been a pleasure having you, and uh, we look forward to the next episode. Mm -hmm.